Well, here's something you probably don't see every day. It's a batch of Marvel Atlas comics from the 1950s. So if you want to learn how to grade comics, or at least learn how I do it, or if you just want to look at some cool old comic books, well, stick around. This is the video for you. Hey there, Bobby. Welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is The Daily Grade. Back on, I hope, a daily basis. And today we're going to be looking at some Marvel Atlas comics from the 1950s. So if you don't know, Atlas is typified by the Atlas Globe logo. Atlas is the company that became Marvel Comics. Uh, and uh, Atlas was actually the distributor. Uh, publisher Martin Goodman had about a thousand different actual company names for the comic book publishing unit and that was basically for uh, tax purposes but uh, the distributor was Atlas Comics and that's how the company was known during the 50s of course in the 40s it was Timely Comics and it would eventually become in the 60s Marvel Comics so when you hear people refer to uh, a Marvel Atlas book this is basically what they are referring to and the company published all kinds of genres it, it chased after everything every fad of the moment until it finally hit on superheroes in the 60s of course it also published superheroes in the 40s and they died out but uh, hit it big with the superheroes again in the 60s so we're going to take a look at these books we will grade them up uh, up front uh, just to let you know, these are books that I am grading for work. These are not my own personal books. Uh, but when I say I'm grading them for work, I guess it's worth noting that uh, I'm doing this for you on my own time. This is you know, a little warm-up I do before I start my work day. But just for full disclosure, the company that I work for operates two websites, sellmycomicbooks.com and .comcomics.com. And uh, kind of counterintuitively, it buys through Sell My Comic Books, sells through .com, although it does have a store on both sites. Uh, and it also has a YouTube channel you may have seen where we unbox collections as they come in and show those off. And the big books, the ones that go to CGC, those are auctioned on a site called Comic Link. But the vast bulk of what we sell, uh, we parcel out on eBay, and so single books like this, I'm the one who grades these. So if you ever buy a book from the seller.com comics on eBay and you don't like the grade, <laughs> it's a pretty good chance, nine times out of ten, I'm the guy you're mad at. So, hey, let's not waste any time. Uh, like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff if you enjoyed this video. But let's get right on with the grading. So what I do is I pick up a book and I instantly kind of assess, okay, good fine near mint because i've been collecting for a long long time and when i started the overstreet guide that's what it had those three grades that was it very fine and very good came along later and of course the um the 10 point scale that we know today which was kind of adopted from baseball card collecting in the 90s <laughs> that's a new trick for me i'm an old dog so what i do is i pick up a book i instantly assess okay is it good fine or mint uh, or near mint and I'm going to call this closer to fine and then I'm then I start narrowing down okay very fine or very good and it's you know it's still pretty close to fine and so at that point I convert over to the scale okay fine is 6.0 and then I'll start narrowing down and looking for defects so uh, you won't hear me do that every time that's just sort of something I do in my head so uh, of course I uh, you know look at the front cover look at the back cover look at the spine this book is complete so this is this is great when you consider that this is now let's look at the uh indicia here 1955 if you can read that so that's a great shape for a book from 1955 and uh, of course the next thing that i do is i uh, do a quick scan make sure it's complete make sure all of the uh, pages are there and always kind of look for that center fold. Make sure that's tight. And it is. Make sure uh, no pages missing. 
check the inside front, check the inside back. Everything looks good. We do have, I don't know if you can see it or not, a small piece out right here, very minor. Some blunting along the top. Uh, no really spine abrasions, not a lot of stress marks either. You get a little something right there. And there is kind of a eighth of an inch spine split, right? Yeah, see there, can you see it now? Hopefully I'm holding that on camera so you can see it. So that's about an eighth of an inch spine split there. And we'll note that on the grading sheet. What happens is once I determine a grade, I will give it to a lister who will actually post it to eBay. And these defects will be, uh, will be itemized so they can be listed on the description. Not every defect, but usually things along the spine that would not be evident in a scan of the book. So I'm still... I've got to come down a little bit from a 6 because we've got a crease here. We've got a little bit of, you probably can't see it in the photo, but right along here, there's a little bit of wrinkling, like a little bit of moisture wrinkling. And we have some micro tears kind of along here. I don't think there are any, oh, there are. There are, you know, little eighth of an inch tears right along here. So I think I'm actually going to call that, I don't know. I could go as far down as a five. And that's probably what I'll do. I've got some stressing here. I could call it a 5-5, five five, but I think I... You know, that little piece out and some stressing here. I think I'm going to end up calling that a 5. I really kind of want to call it a 5-5. Five five, but you've got these 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 tears there. And that's really a little too much for it to be a 5-5. Five 5-5 five. Five five would be a fine minus. A 5 is a, a very good fine. And again, I'll show you some more of the artwork inside. That almost looks like Alex Toth a little bit. I don't happen to know any of the artists from this book right off the top of my head. And of course... There were no creator credits at this time. Yeah, I think I'm going to end up calling that a five. List it. And let's look at the next book, Battle. Battle. So we've got spine roll. We've got a quarter inch rip here. So I'm already down to a uh, very good. Let's look at the... Yeah, so the cover is detached from the bottom staple. It really wants to detach from the top staple, which that top staple isn't actually <laughs> very near the top. And it actually looks to me like... I'll have to look inside. It almost looks to me like that's an added staple. Maybe not. But this book might have been made with no top staple and then somebody put one in. Let's look inside here. The page quality on these uh, books is pretty nice. They're uh, just kind of starting to tan. Yeah, see that? That staple didn't even go all the way through the book. It looks like somebody stapled it from the centerfold. And is our centerfold detached? It is. Centerfold's detached. Next one is detached. Third one is tight. Yep. Yeah. So it looks to me like the book was made without a top staple. And I apologize if I'm not holding that so you can see it on the screen. But you can see here we've got two loose centerfolds. So that's going to bring it down to like a 3.5, maybe even a 3. But you can see here, when we take out the two loose centerfolds, and you can see that that staple didn't even go through the back half of the book. 
So it almost looks to me like somebody opened the book and then put a staple through the front half to just kind of hold it together because maybe maybe the staple didn't uh, didn't come with a staple to begin with. Although that staple's got a nice patina to it that you would think it is uh, you would think it is original. So let me and I'm sorry if I'm getting that a little close. I've got to hold it close enough so I can actually see it <laughs> with my eyes, my old, old eyes. All right, I got to put the centerfold back in. Right there. And then it goes in like that. So I think we're going to end up calling that probably a 3.5. Not quite as bad as a 3. What do you think? What would you call it? What would you take off for the centerfold plus another center wrap being detached? The question of that staple and it being, of course, the cover being detached from the bottom staple. Other than that, the edges aren't that bad. There's a few spine creases in here, but not a lot there and there. The book looks kind of reasonable, but I'm going to call it a 3.5. And if you think differently, then by all means, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you would do with that book. And our next issue of Battle here is number 38. And I don't know if I uh, did the date on the first one. Let's, uh, let's look at this one. And it looks like that is a... Marvel's a little hard because they don't have it right at the front. you got to look about midway through. Yep, 55. So these are 55 books as well. And this one is kind of a little better than very good. It's uh, kind of starting in a 4, maybe a 4 or 5. The biggest problem is right here. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you can see it. The spine is folded back a little bit, a little bit of a roll. So it looks like, you know, somebody who read it rolled the pages back, folded those pages back all the way. But you've got some blunting along the top and some tears there. Otherwise, page quality is decent. Centerfold's tight. And so I think that book, I'm going to call that a a four or five, and I would get this up to a five, maybe even a five, five or a six. Biggest problem is is right in here, all of that. So I think, yeah, I'm going to call that a four or five. Like I said, this is kind of the warm up to my grading day. You, uh, if you feel differently about any of these books, I do encourage you to. Say so in the comments below. So this is this book's a little weird. I don't know if this has been trimmed. I don't think so, but it feels a little narrower. See how see how much narrower that one is than the book the book below it. It's not altogether uncommon. Um, the Marvel Atlas books did did vary in size, probably depending on where they were printed. Everything looks complete. Oh nope. Well, I mean it's complete, but the uh, Center fold is loose. Is it just one or two? Looks like it is just the one. So the center fold is loose, if you can see that. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on here, but it feels like there's a little bit of moisture wrinkling. And then we've got some spine issues, a lot of creases, and kind of an abrasion right there in the middle. It takes off a lot of the color. Got a small piece missing down here from the cover. And it's kind of there, but folded back. Otherwise, though, the page quality is decent. And it's complete. But that, I think, is going to be a four. This uh, I don't really love this uh, kind of fold here. It looks like the whole thing, kind of from stem to stern, was folded at one time. Or at least the cover. 
But again, if we look at the inside, I don't think that book was actually trimmed. I think it's just actually printed that narrow. And uh, let me just check that cover again, because that's, oh, goodness. Well, the cover is attached. A little rip there, but I'm going to call that a four. What would you call that? Next up is Black Rider, number 26. Not that long ago, we got uh, in a collection, and it was sorted as a single, just like these books. Black Rider, number, I want to say 19. It's the one with Stan Lee posing as this character on the cover. It's a photo cover, and it's actually Stan Lee. Uh, <laughs> and so I pulled that book out. I'm like, we're going to send that to CGC. I don't think that's come back yet, but it was in nice shape. It was, it was a near seven. So I'm uh, I'm still waiting to get that book back and see how it uh, how it ends up looking. So this one, number 26, that is a 1955 as well. Looks like all of these are 55. What is going on there at the top? Oh, okay, we've got a kind of a big. Yeah, it's it's uh, that's not a tear. What that is is it's it's like a paper shear. Oh, no, I guess it is. No. Covers there, covers there. So that's like some kind of a, a paper shear. You know, that's not torn away there or there. But it just looks like, like, like one layer of the cover came up. Isn't that weird? Inside looks good, looks complete. Looking good here as well. It's got those center fold uh, staples nice and tight. I don't know how much of that artwork you were able to see. Let's show it to you. Isn't that beautiful? See, to me, that's a good comic book. That tells a story. Today, your comic books, you get two or three pages a panel and they've got to, the writers feel the need to write and the artists feel the need to draw like every beat of a scene, like they're doing a movie script, like they're filming a movie. And, and it's just not how comic books are done. And so consequently, you, you know, you get to the end of a book, it takes you about 10 minutes to read and nothing actually happened. Well, here by golly, stuff is happening. <laughs> you know? So, uh, I'm going to call this also a four. Again, we got the kind of a quarter inch spine split at the bottom, that paper shear on the back, but otherwise, it's mostly tight. And this, again, it looks like the cover was folded all the way back when it was red. But I think I'm going to go with a four on that one as well. So a 4, a 4 o equates to a very good. And now we'll pick up with a little cowboy action. So let's take a look here. And uh, just for you, we're going to look at the Indicia again one more time. 1955. <clears throat> My voice cracked. <laughs> Going through puberty. So this is a nice looking book. Uh, the... Um, cover is kind of rolled to the back like it wasn't printed right, but you know, you're, you're not missing any of the image here on this side. That's a little weird. I almost wonder if, well, I don't think it was trimmed. What number is this? Cowboy Action number six. Huge Comic Code Authority seal. But of course, you know, 55 it would be. Did those other ones... I missed it. Did those battles? No. So those are 55. And they're missing. There's no CCA seal. Oh, there was on that battle. But, and there was on that battle. Maybe Black Rider was just so wholesome. He didn't need approval. No! Look at that. There's none there either. So... This is right in the time frame when the Comics Code Authority started up. What do you think of that? Pretty awesome, huh? But, back to our uh, cowboy action. So, yeah, this book actually looks pretty good. It's, uh, 
closer to a fine, certainly, than a good. And on the very good scale, it's closer to a fine than a very good. So I'm, well, somebody wrote something right there. So let's look inside. See how much you can see here. Got to get to that centerfold and see if it's nice and tight. And it is free famous people on stamps. All dead. You had to be dead back then. I think you still do. I'm not sure. I can't remember the last time I bought a stamp. How about you? No law in Dorado. Oh, look. See, Joe Manley. Now they say, Joe Manley, what was the deal with him? He was hit by a train or something like that. But it is said, of course, uh, Joe Manley and Stan Lee were very good friends. Joe was one of Stan's favorite artists, and it is very possible that had Joe lived, not been hit by that train, or however it was he died, uh, that the Marvel Universe that we know and recognize um, would look very different, because there there is certainly a thought out there that you know Jack Kirby. There might not have been room for Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko at Marvel had Joe still been alive. You know, especially after 1957 when uh, the Marvel line kind of crashed. Marvel, um, at this time, you know, at, at that time, 57, it uh, did away with its distributor, Atlas. One of Martin Goodman's employees had talked him out of uh, distributing the books themselves folding that arm and throwing in with American distribution. Well, American was in the middle of an antitrust lawsuit with the feds and uh, <laughs> ended up getting getting busted, busted up and thrown apart, went out of business, and that left Martin Goodman high and dry. Had to fire everybody, um, went hat in hand to Independent News, which was owned by DC Comics, and uh, they limited, DC limited uh, Goodman to just eight titles. So he had to get rid of everybody. The staff was just uh, Stan Lee, a uh, receptionist, and maybe uh, Saul Brodsky, you know, a production person. And that was it. And so certainly, had Joe lived when, uh, you know, when Stan was able to start hiring again, and, you know, the Marvel Universe came along just as he was able to kind of start hiring and get things going once more because because for a while there they just used up inventory stories they didn't even you know they didn't hire any freelancers at all but once he started getting going you know if joe had been around it probably would have been joe who would have been drawing the fantastic four and not jack kirby uh or possibly spider-man instead of ditko you never know so anyway <laughs> That was my long and pointless story, which maybe, you know, if you're a comic book fan, you already know you're familiar with that story. But as far as the grading goes, uh, I am going to call this book, I'm going to call this a five. I think I am going to go with a five on that because it's it's pretty good other than other than some you know spine ticks here. Everything else is pretty tight. I could almost go a 5-5, five five, but I don't know if I dare, because that's a little, a little rough right in there. You know, and you got color breaks the whole kind of length of the spine. But the edges are certainly nice and square and tight, because you got that little bit of writing on the back. So I don't think I'm going to go quite to a 5-5, five five, which would be a, a fine minus. I think we're going we're gonna to be right there at a 5, a very good fine. And moving on to Kid Colt Outlaw. So this one has a little more going on with it. A few more issues. A lot of folding up here, a lot of tearing, some chips out of this corner. And I seem to find this a lot with Marvels, more with the Marvels of the 60s, that for some reason the top is always kind of folded up. It's like the top of the cover extends over the actual book the interior, you know, the, the bottom is always nice and level, but the tops seem to protrude, and then so they get all folded and banged up. I don't know why that is. 
I don't see it anywhere else with anybody else's books. So we'll look through this. And looking for that centerfold. There it is. Nice and tight. Everything looks clean. A little bit of paint or something on the uh, inside cover there. That's weird. And of course we have a piece out there. So I think I'm going to call this one a 4-5. Nothing really major enough to make it a 4, which is a very good. I'm going to call it a very good plus. Not quite a 5, because again there's some chipping along the edges here. And small pieces out here and there. Nothing really major enough to call it a four. So I'm going to call that one a four or five. Now this is a cool book because, and you don't see an issue number anywhere here on the cover. You got to look inside. This is actually Rawhide Kid number two. And I say it's neat because Rawhide Kid survived all the way kind of deep into the Marvel Age. I think the Rawhide Kid was still going, if not strong, at least... Uh, at least limping along, if not a gallop, a limp, well into the 70s. So this is 1955, and it is, I saw it earlier, there it is, number two. So, uh, we got a little bit of a quarter-inch top spine split. A little piece out here, a little fold there, but otherwise not too shabby. I'm going to check that top staple, and it is attached, so that's good. Back is fine. Got some more stressing here a little bit. Page quality is decent. Arch, nice. Looking for that center fold, and there it is, nice and tight. So I would presume this doesn't have an issue uh, number on the cover because back then you had kind of the opposite theory of what you have today. Today, right, number one sells. They always want to do number one. One, two, three. Get back to number one as often as you can. Reboot, reboot, reboot. Well, back at this time, back in the era of the uh, the mom and pop newsstands and the, you know, the newsstand distributors, an, a first issue or a low issue number was seen as... A risk you know you wanted if something was on issue 100 200 whatever it might be well that was seen as a sure bet you know it, it was popular enough to have lasted that long so it's probably going to sell sometimes you know if there was a lack of, uh, of newsstand space the uh, you know the retailer would even put out a number one or a number two the distributor uh, wouldn't even, you know, would never even move it out of the warehouse just because of the risk that, you know, there was this, you know, number one issue and who knows if anyone's going to buy it. So that's probably why there's no issue number on here because it's a low issue number. So they were hoping to kind of skirt it by. And here is again a Joe Manley signature. So I'm going to call this, I kind of, I'm going to call that a five. Well, we've got a lot going on. You have the spine split, the fold there, a little piece out. There's a small tear there. But overall, it's got decent appeal. Decent eye appeal, I should say. Some tears along here. But it's not so bad that I would call it a 4 or 5. That, you know, if you put that in a case, that'd be a nice presentation copy, even still. So I am going to call that... Get it there so you can see the full thing. I'm going to call that a five. And now, absolutely no subtlety. If you want a war comic, by golly, war is the title for you. <laughs> and this, like like that earlier book that we looked at, is kind of narrower. It's a little narrower than a standard book. And I don't think it was trimmed. That's just that's just how it was. I mean, if it was trimmed, if it was trimmed that much you know, it would break into the artwork. And, uh, and of course it doesn't. 
So we've got a big fold here. This is kind of ugly all along there. And I don't think that's actual Marvel chipping. Marvel comics uh, were notorious for uh, being run off, uh, <laughs> run off a printing press with a dull blade, and there'd be a lot of uh, a lot of chipping. What did somebody write here? Six fourteen is probably an arrival date, considering a September cover date. So June is probably when it arrived on the newsstands. I can't tell what that is. S Y K maybe. S and K Simon and Kirby. I don't know. <laughs> I doubt that. I love this guy here on the walkie-talkie, like, <laughs> like he's being all secretive. Like <laughs> nobody knows he's using the walkie-talkie. He's fooling everybody. Um, so yeah, and we get a lot of tearing down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go probably below a four for this. It might even be a three-five. Let's take a look. See what else we got going on. Stressing on the back. What did somebody right here on the back? That looks like it's been erased. QP3384. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Somebody's locker combination, maybe. <laughs> what the hell is this ad? <laughs> oh, slim and trim in five seconds. Okay, I thought it was some cod piece thing. <laughs> Like stuff in your bra, stuff in your pants. That's yeah, funny. Get all of these page, uh, all of these books. The page quality is quite nice. And I have to uh, have to keep remembering to hold this far enough away that you can see the whole thing. Because in order to really get a good look at it with my eyes, I got to be a little closer. And I had trouble in previous videos getting my fat head in the shot. <laughs> oh, look at that. Mort Drucker. So uh, he's kind of famous for uh, Mad Magazine. And here he is working on a uh, pre-Marvel Atlas comic. And you can definitely see some Druckerism there in that, uh, in that drawing right there, can't you? You can almost see a, a Mort Drucker caricature. <laughs> you gotta love how these Asians are, uh, are uh, North Koreans, I presume, are being <laughs> colored. <laughs> Look like they have jaundice or something, like really bad. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm going to call that a 3.5. It's a little worse than a 4. If it didn't have any of this... I could probably get it up to a, a you know, a four five, but you've got quite a bit of of uh, stressing along here. You've got all the chipping along the top, little tears along the bottom, and that fold, the back, all that blunting, more tears here, plus the writing front and back. No, an arrival date generally does not affect the grade but this other stuff you know is it's not huge it's not major but i think i'm going to end up calling that a three five and so one last book and this one is actually not a marvel book it's rated pg <laughs> uh this is um what is pdc ID is independent distributors. PDC is some distributor, but I don't know who it is. I'd have to look it up. This is 1955. Robin Hood number 52. And who's the publisher here? Sussex Publishing Company. So I don't actually know who the publisher is on this. I'm going to have to look it up in the Overstreet. You can see there at the bottom that we've got some tearing at the bottom of the cover, but the staples are tight. Uh, we've got some rust on that top staple, which I don't like. And all that blunting and, and tearing along the top. Also, you may not be able to see it on the camera, but it's kind of wrinkled. But I think that's just handling. I don't think that's any kind of moisture wrinkling. It's not water damage. I don't think.
but it is definitely some wrinkling going on there. And uh, I don't know if this came from the same collection or not. I mean, the pages are uh, a little more tan. Frank Ball, so uh, he's a known artist for sure. You can see him signing everywhere. Frank Ball, didn't he work on a comic strip? What did he work on? He didn't work on Prince Valiant, did he? That was always Hal Foster. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to have to look up a little bit of information on this book. I don't actually... <laughs> I don't want to say I don't know what I'm looking at, but... <laughs> uh, I'm going to call that... I am going to call that a four, I think. Just because of all this wrinkling. I mean, if you, if you hold it like that, it kind of looks nice. But... Get a little closer, you can see all that wrinkling. The tearing and the rust. I hate rust. Um, and of course, with all that ripping at the bottom. So I'm going to call that one a four. And that is it for that batch of comic books. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, like I said, it's a little warm up to my day of grading comic books for work. And uh, I think the next batch is going to be some Spider Man. So if you want to look at some early Spider Mans, do come back. But until then, goodbye, good luck, and please. Be good to each other.